my name is John Furlong. I was uh, born and uh, raised in the West End of uh, St. John's. Come from a uh, small family by St. John's standards. Just uh, there was just two of us. My brother uh, Jim, many people might know, works uh, also in this business. It's uh, Jim Furlong. I uh, like to say that he works at a competing network that shall remain nameless, but whose initials are NTV. Uh, so there was just uh, Jim and I growing up on uh, Pleasant Street. I had a relatively um, uh, eventful uh, childhood uh, and then decided to leave it all behind at the age of 18 and I moved to London, England by myself, which was an extraordinary experience. Um, came back here, managed to land a job at the um, a now defunct a newspaper and um, moved from newspapers to radio, back to newspapers, to radio, to television and now back to radio, which is what, what brings me here today. I'm the host of the uh, Fisheries Broadcast, um, the longest-running daily current affairs program in uh, Canada. It deals exclusively with the fishery, a subject I knew nothing about when I first came here. Um, so, yeah, and I host that five days a week. It's challenging because uh, there's always a pushback from people in the fishing industry if you explore issues they don't want explored. There's always pushback from the union when you explore issues that the union doesn't want to explore. It. There's always pushback from the government for the same thing. And I like asking people difficult questions. And I like making the government accountable. I think that's a role somewhere in the media to be pointing sharp sticks at the government. And I want to be one of those pointing sharp sticks at the government because the government needs it. I mean, and, and so does the fishing industry. I think the fisheries broadcast gives a great window into the the heart and soul of Newfoundland. When you listen to the people who call with uh, the people who call with such incredible passion and um, and knowledge, and not to diminish other radio programs that have people call in, but the people who call into the fisheries broadcast by and large know what they're talking about. They're not full of bluster and and bombast and just want to spread their opinions all over everybody. These people share their lived experiences, and I think that comes comes through on the radio. During 9-11, uh, when, the, when the planes all landed at Gander and the people in Gander opened up their homes to them, you know, the people in, in, in the U.S. were awestruck at the generosity of people in Gander. But that's no different than goes on in, that has, and has been going on in Newfoundland for, for generations. That's the way we are. We leave our doors open and we welcome strangers and we, we feed the hungry and we clothe the naked, and, you know, and we comfort the afflicted. That's what people in Newfoundland and Labrador do. And I think we, we pride ourselves on that and it makes, us, it makes us different. The lovely rich accents that we have, the music, the art, it makes us different. If we never had any of, all, any of those, well, we'd just be, we'd be like New Brunswick or Nova Scotia, or who wants to be like that? No offense to them, but we're unique. We're, we're all part of this change in Newfoundland and Labrador, and uh, it's, it's a very, um, I play a very minor role. You know, years ago I had my, uh, my son, he's 30 now, but years ago I had him stick his hand in a, in, a, in a river, and I talked to him about the water flowing around his hand. And I said, you know, in some very small, minute way, you've changed the course of that river by sticking your hand in it. And that's the way the world can be. And, you know, it was a probably overzealous thing to teach a little six or seven year old uh, boy. But, you know, it's the same way with the broadcast. I think that we play such a minor role as to it may not measure. But I think we do play a role in the future of Newfoundland and Labrador. And I think we play a role in the future of the fishery in Newfoundland and Labrador. And I think we play a role in people understanding how that will play out in, in, the, in the coming weeks and months ahead. And I'm you know, I feel so blessed to be part of it. I get up every morning and I, and I can't, can't wait to get to work. And people ask me now, I'm, I'm as old as the broadcast and we're celebrating our 60th uh, anniversary. People ask me now, oh, you must be getting, for, getting ready for retirement. You know, and I, I always say the same thing. As soon as it stops being interesting, I'll retire. And as soon as it stops being fun. But I love my job so much. The CBC has allowed me to uh, spread my wings and to try different things on the broadcast and to be the kind of host that I want to be. And so I feel, you know, having, having been on the, on the fisheries broadcast just these five short years, I, I feel like I'm the luckiest guy in the world.